Hi, I'm Jen Delvo, and I'm so pleased that you decided to join me for today's reflection. And before we begin, I'd just like us to begin with prayer. And I know some of you might be coming into this after a moment of chaos or just carrying perhaps particularly heavy burdens. So whenever I'm entering into prayer, I always like to take just a couple of really good, deep breaths. So I invite you to just breathe in and breathe out. And breathe in, and know that you are loved by God. And to breathe out, a moment letting God know a little bit about what you're bringing into this moment of prayer and reflection. And so I invite you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, we ask you to just help us feel your presence as each of us are in our own space as we listen to this recording we know that you bind us together in your arms lifting us up in your light and your love and in turn we lift up the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts we lift up the prayers for those who've asked us to pray for them we lift up the prayers for those who don't have anyone praying for them for those who might be lonely particularly in the time of this pandemic we lift up our prayers for those who are suffering in pain and dying. And we just ask you to be with us. Help us to hear your voice today in the scripture and this reflection. Hear your voice in the conversations and the people that we encounter today. And that you remind us that you are with us today and all days. Amen. So today's reflection is from based on the gospel and the gospel of John. And we don't get to hear too much from the gospel of John. So I'm always excited when he shows up, particularly in year B, which we're in in the lectionary uh, during the Lenten season, because there's some fantastic uh, portions of the gospel, particularly as you get into the passion narratives. And so this comes from John chapter 12, for those who might wanna open up their own Bibles and read along. It's chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. And this says, Now there were some Greeks among those who had come up to worship at the feast, the Passover. They came to Philip, who is from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came into this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating what kind of death he would die. Now, what does this gospel say to me? Well, let me tell you about one of the fastest ways that I know about to frighten away a crowd of Catholics. Start talking about evangelization. Now, a lot of times we hear that and we run and we think it's for somebody else. But the reality is, is that we're all called to be evangelizing. We're all called to be evangelizers. This isn't a new idea. 
And one of my favorite quotes on this actually comes from Paul VI. Pope Paul VI in 1975 wrote, evangelizing is in fact the grace and vocation proper to the church, her deepest identity. She exists in order to evangelize. Now think about that for a minute. It's our identity to evangelize. We exist to evangelize. And unless you stop and think, you might say, oh, it's okay, I don't have to evangelize. That's the church, that's the institution, that's the Vatican, that's the parish's job. But I hate to remind you, we're the church, the people of God, you and me, we are called to be evangelizing. So yes, it is something for the institution, but it's also something for us as individuals. It's something we're constantly invited to do. It's our identity. And Pope Francis reminds that all the time in his talks and in his writings. Okay, so it's our identity. What are we supposed to do? What does it look like? How do we do this? Well, this is where it ties into the gospel because I think today's gospel is a really great example of it. How does it start? Some Greeks who were learning about God through the Jewish faith had some questions. And so they went to Philip, who we believe had some ties to the Greeks himself, and asked a question. Think about that. There was a common tie, a relationship. It gave room for conversation. It gave room for a question. So then what happened? Philip goes to Andrew another believer in Jesus, a follower of Jesus. He wasn't in this by himself. He had somebody that he could go to that could walk with him. And then the two of them went to Jesus. No one person has to do everything, to be everything, to solve everything. We live and worship and evangelize together as a community. And what is it? that we invite people to when we evangelize? What is it that is the point or the message? Well, Jesus gives us much of those words in today's gospel, that it's the fact that he came to give his life so that we have hope of this resurrection. We have hope of eternal life. We have hope of being drawn to him in his arms. We live in that joyful expectation. We are in people who even in the midst of Lent remember that we are an Easter people. That's the message that we want to help invite others to know and to experience as deeply as we try to know and experience it. And it's tempting to defer this to others, to people like me. I work in evangelization and missionary discipleship for the Archdiocese. This is what I talk about day in and day out. Or to defer to the priests or the men and women in religious communities. And yes, it's a part of their vocations too, but it, as I said at the beginning, is part of each of our vocations. We're each called to. And sometimes we all have those moments where we think, I don't know the right words, I don't know enough. I'm worried about what the other person might think or say or do. I have those same thoughts myself. And like I said, this is what I do every day. And so when I start thinking about those things, when I start having those doubts, and questioning myself and questioning whether I know enough or I'm good enough to share God's news, good news and love with others, I remind myself that that's what that's about, love. It's about what's written on our hearts as the reading from Jeremiah reminds us, that it's God's covenant written not in stone but in our hearts. It's about love. We are deeply, profoundly, irrevocably and immeasurably loved by our God. There is that covenant, that relationship that God has ingrained in our hearts that is true and strong and so ancient. That is which we can dig into, that love and that ancient covenant when we have to face the struggles and the joys day in and day out. It's what we can reach into and root ourselves in when we wonder how can I possibly find the words to share these hopes and sufferings and joys with others around me. It's the love and the covenant written in our hearts. And we do this not by standing on soapboxes, but just like those Greeks who went to Philip, who they knew, and who Philip then turned to Andrew and said, can you help? We do this by relationship. We do this in the relationships that we already have with our friends and our family, with acquaintances. We offer comfort and grief, and we share where we find strength in our faith when we're grieving. 
we name that when we lift up their joys and prayers, when we celebrate and we love selflessly as Jesus did. But here's the important part. We have to name it's in Jesus, in our faith. It's not just being Catholic nice, but giving testimony to why we pray, to whom we pray, to where we find that solace. And we do this not in order to fill our pews or something along those lines, but because we are loved and we want to turn that love outwards to others. We want to share God's deep, profound, immeasurable, irrevocable love. We share our hope, our peace, and our prayers, and we live Lent in the world where we can give voice to why. Hopefully the weather will be a little warmer and we can go outside on a Friday to meet up with friends and say, no, I'm going to pass on that first cookout of the season because I don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to stand on a soapbox and explain the entire catechism, but just simply say why we do what we do. When we do offer comfort to somebody who might be lonely or grieving, we can say where we find that strength in our faith briefly and without flourish or demands. And then we can carry on in the normal relationship we have with that individual. Evangelization isn't a program or an agenda. It's simply walking with one another, sharing God's love and loving the other. It's who we're called to be. And it's a way that we can help others experience God's love and we can build the reign of God in our world and invite others to join us as sisters and brothers in building and journeying in the reign of God. And so I invite you to take a couple minutes to sit with today's readings. Converse with God about how you find hope, joy, peace in your relationship with God. And I invite you this week, and this might be the hard part, to consider who's one person you can share a little bit of your reason for that hope and joy and peace. Share a little bit of where God is at work in your life with them. My prayer for you this week is that you deepen your experience and know in your innermost self that you are deeply, profoundly, immeasurably, and irrevocably loved by God. That you too live in that covenant, that ancient, strong, and true covenant with God. And that you root yourself in both of those things as you go about this week with whatever joys or sufferings, blessings, and consolations that you might need, that I pray you find them in God's love and in God's covenant. And that from those roots, you're able to reach out in love to one another and to the world. Take care and God bless.